a nostalgic look at the past. Up in the sky over Lake Constance, the legendary DOX. In 1929, the world's largest seaplane. Length, 130 feet. Height, 33 feet. Wingspan, 156 feet. Overall weight, 125,000 pounds. Designed by Claude Dornier, former collaborator of Count Zeppelin. It was powered by 12 tandem design engines of 640 brake horsepower each. The DOX marked the start of large capacity air travel. On November the 5th, 1930, start of a worldwide flight across three continents. The flying boat has three decks. On the upper deck, the pilots, navigation and engine control room. There's a crew of 14. The lower deck houses the fuel tank with a capacity of 5,110 gallons. The middle deck has accommodation for 70 passengers. On one test flight, she carried as many as 170 people. There are sleeping berths, a bar and a saloon. Dr. Dornier himself travelled on this world flight. Everything is done for the well-being of the passenger, priority being given to comfort and service. In fact, the DOX has the comforts of an ocean liner. Via Amsterdam, the first port of call to England. The white cliffs of the Channel Coast come into view and the flying boat arrives at Calshot near Southampton. A characteristic feature of the DOX, soft landing. Among the first guests to come on board is the Prince of Wales, later the Duke of Windsor. He is just as impressed by this flying boat from Germany as many of his countrymen who come to inspect the large capacity aircraft with its unusual dimensions. The flight continues across Europe, from England via France to Spain and Portugal. In the harbour of Lisbon, a fire on one of the wings, which are partly spun with fabric, delays departure. But after a brief stop for repairs, the DOX is ready for takeoff again, heading this time for West Africa. The cockpit looks like the bridge on a ship. And now for the hop across the Atlantic. In 1931, this was still one of the big adventures of flying. Cruising speed, 110 miles per hour. Commander Christiansen checks his course. After a 13-hour flight, the island of Fernando Noronha off the coast of Brazil comes into view. And shortly afterwards, landing at Natal. The first crossing of the South Atlantic by a large capacity aircraft has succeeded. Hundreds of natives gaze in wonder at the giant and exotic looking floating bird. <laughs> Provisions are taken on board, and the crew make a brief excursion ashore. And now along the coast to the south. June the 20th, 1931. The DOX arrives at Rio de Janeiro. In the capital of Brazil, the second largest country in South America, there is also a cordial reception. Especially in the large German colony here, the people are proud to welcome such an unusually successful ambassador from home. Overhaul and repair work. The DOX is towed to one of the docks. Take off for the next crucial stage. The long flight north from Rio to New York passes off without incident. Day of triumph. 
On August the 27th, 1931, the DOX hovers over New York. For the Americans, inured as they are to sensations after Charles Lindbergh's historic solo flight across the ocean and the Atlantic crossing by Fitzmaurice, Kohl and Hunefeld, this is the event of the year. For the re-emergence of the German aircraft industry after the end of World War I, the flight of the DOX gives an important boost to Germany's international prestige. Pictures which appeared in all the world's newspapers. The world's largest flying boat on the Hudson River. A major attraction for New York sightseers and an exciting subject of report and comment in newsreels, press and radio. Outside the City Hall in New York, a tribute by the mayor. The flying boat spends the winter in New York. May 1932. The flight back across the North Atlantic to Europe. And then they've made it. On May the 24th, 1932, after a flight of altogether 22,000 miles, the DOX touches down on the Middlesee in Berlin, welcomed by enthusiastic crowds. Half Berlin turned out to welcome the homecomers. <laughs> An historic moment. Designer and crew have proved that the age of the large capacity aircraft and of faster ocean crossings has really come. Round trip over Germany. Millions of people witnessed this plight. In Cologne, the flying boat comes down on the Rhine, close to the riverbank on which today the head office of the German Lufthansa is situated. The Minister of Transport of that time, Herr Treviranus, pays tribute to Dr. Dornier and the men of the DOX for their pioneer act. I can assure you that those who, despite all the tribulations and setbacks of the past six years, persisted in their belief that it must be possible to cross the Atlantic with an aircraft the size of the DOX with 12 engines have been proved right. Thank you.